Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE. Covering Accelerate 2017. Brought to you by Fortinet. Now, here are your hosts, Lisa Martin and Peter Burris. Hey, welcome back to theCUBE. I'm Lisa Martin with my co-host Peter Burris. We are coming to you live from Las Vegas. We're with Fortinet today at their Accelerate 2017 event, which brings together end users, over 700 partners from 93 countries. Great buzz today. Very excited to be joined by Richard Hanna, who is the VP of Information Services at Gibson Energy. Richard, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you for having me. Great to have you here. First and foremost, Richard, help us understand what is a VP of Information Services? Uh, so maybe first off, I'll just explain Gibson Energy. Yes, that was um, probably my first question. So <laughs> Gibson, uh, Gibson Energy is a uh, Calgary, Canada-based uh, midstream oil and gas company, um, but we do have uh, locations throughout North America um, in, in all the major oil basins throughout North America. Um, we're considered a midstream oil and gas uh, company, which if you, uh, the categories of, uh, of the ener energy industry is really, upstream would be the companies that are taking the product out of the ground, downstream would be closer to retail, and we're in the middle, so midstream side. So basically that entails um, logistics, so think trucking, train, so moving of the uh, oil and gas, um, infrastructure around storage. Um, You're getting it too. Use. That kind of stuff, yep. And then the marketing side would be uh, the actual going to the end customer. So our marketing group would be looking for the end customer, uh, like refineries, etc. Um, so that's kind of what makes up uh, makes up our company. About two over two hundred locations, um, and uh, pretty complex uh, complex business. So to your question, um, it's a Gibson is a sixty year old company. Uh, never had a kind of a senior uh, IT leader in its history. But through uh, a number of acquisitions, we had doubled in size kind of coming into uh, 2013. And so I was hired as their first uh, VP of IT and basically look after all of the uh, strategy around uh, technology, the operations around technology, security of technology for, for the company. So a lot of companies are now looking at IT as not just handling the operations of known processes, and by known processes I mean accounting, HR, et cetera, right. but they're actually looking at IT to be a partner in going after opportunities that may not be so well formed, right. that may require analytics or be dependent upon analytics. Right. Is Gibson starting to think in those terms, and is that part of your remit as an executive within Gibson, is to help think that process through? Uh, definitely, yeah. I think, you know, um, there's obviously the uh, the normal day-to-day -day keep the lights on of IT, and there was some major investments and in transformation, if you will, that needed to happen on the technology side. Um, and that's kind of what, what went on in the, say, the 2015 to 2016 range. But now we are actually, you know, as you, as you uh, discussed, we're actually now looking at ways of uh, using technology to add value to the company. I think, uh, you know, IoT is, is a great example of that. We're doing some interesting things with IoT, um, doing some interesting things with HoloLens. So we're actually starting to, uh, you know, be that true kind of strategic enabler uh, for the company. Well, talk about some of those IoT opportunities. I mean, uh, certainly in the midstream oil and gas universe, there's a lot of very, very expensive equipment right. that has to be maintained and taken care of. So how is IoT starting to impact the way the business operates? Right. So yeah, as you mentioned, we have you know thousands and thousands of devices uh, in the in the field. Not uh, little tiny things. Not little no. tiny things. These no. are big things, bigger yeah. than a bread box kind of exactly. stuff. Exactly. So, um, you know, uh, before the concept of IoT, um, any monitoring or, uh, you know, data that you had to get off any of those devices was largely uh, manual or didn't exist at all. So a great example of our first uh, entrance into IoT was uh, with a, one of our disposal uh, wells, well sites in the middle of Alberta. And, um, 
uh, basically, you know, it disposes of uh, things that can't be used within the, uh, you know, within the uh, downstream side of the business. So it uh, environmentally uh, safely uh, disposes of uh, dirt and mud and those types of things, water, a lot of water that obviously comes out of the production side. So that disposal well, um, think about it as a, a, a large heater that uh, uh, heats up to, uh, you know, a large, uh, you know, uh, temperatures and, uh, and, and, and as part of the disposal process. So prior to IoT, um, there was no way to really uh, have any data on how that well was functioning and where, when was the proper time to actually do preventive maintenance on the well. So we connected uh, the well to, um, you know, th using IoT technology um, through to the cloud and then, and then provided analytics on the back end to actually provide information on how that well was performing uh, from a heating standpoint, et cetera. Um, so the operation team can actually now real time uh, look at how that well is performing and then perform maintenance when it's actually time to do it versus just doing it you know, based on gut feel. So save, you know, thousands of hours of uh, maintenance, thousands of, thousands of hours of man time, et cetera. So that's just one example of how we're connecting, um, you know, some of our devices. We're actually now starting to connect our, our, uh, our way scale, which is part of our, uh, our logistics side of things. So again, prior to connecting those, the way scale, somebody actually had to go out and uh, take the measurements, write them down, take them back, and put them into the operational system. Uh, now we can do that real time as well. So con considerable efficiencies gained at the same time. You exactly. mentioned the word transformation before, I think you both did. You also talked about this growth there. So, from a cloud journey perspective, as, as we think of transformation in that sense, what is, uh, what's been the strategy that you've been employing as you're generating, bringing more IoT devices online to support the business, make it more efficient? What has your journey to the cloud been, uh, especially related to the growth that's happened at such right. a quick pace? So when I, when I arrived back in 2013, as I mentioned, there was a fair bit of uh, transformation that had to happen uh, on the IT side, and we're talking, you know, new uh, ERP, um, new uh, uh, so a lot a lot on the application side, including new ERP, et cetera. But on the infrastructure side, uh, we required uh, again a lot of. Uh, uh, transformation, sorry to keep using that word, but uh, I think it's overused a lot, but it's the best way to describe what was uh, what Evolution, was happening. Transformation, yeah. um, but uh, everything from our network to our data centers, uh, to security, et cetera. So on the data center side, because of the number of acquisitions that the company went through, we actually were sitting with uh, seven data centers, and for a company our size, I mean, way too many data centers, a lot of cost, a lot of uh, you know manpower to maintain those data centers, uh, four of them in the U.S and three of them in Canada. So part of our strategy or, uh, as it pertained to data centers was to consolidate and uh, you know, I remember the uh, kind of as we spoke about the strategy, it was we need to move from somewhere from seven to uh, to less than seven, and zero is the right answer. So, <laughs> meaning, wanted to get out of the data center business and wanted to uh, to go to the cloud as much as possible. So, we're now on that journey. We have um, by the end of 2017, we will have one physical data center, and uh, and and the rest will be in the cloud uh, with with Azure. And you're and you're on that journey with Microsoft Azure, which is a big um, technology alliance partner with Fortinet. Talk to us about the consolidation of data centers and where does the security uh, angle enter the picture? Is it there from the beginning or is it something that has evolved as you've transformed? Um, I would say largely evolved. Um, so as we started architecting our, our cloud strategy with, with Azure, um, I mean, Azure comes with uh, you know, a lot of security components, um, but at the same time we wanted to be in control of our own destiny, as it were, as it pertains to security. So we wanted to um, have uh, you know access to uh, to the firewall side of things. So um, that's how we got into uh, working with Fortinet. Um, 
And it was, we had never been a Fortinet customer prior to that, but as we looked at how do we secure Azure and how do we provide access to our network team uh, as, as it pertains to our connectivity to the cloud, uh, Fortinet kind of came out as, as the clear uh, winner through our due diligence, and we've been quite impressed with uh, their capabilities, their, uh, their partnership with Microsoft and Azure, uh, and their, uh, you know, the, their ability to help us architect a real secure solution as it pertains to uh, our cloud connectivity. So over the next couple of years, you're going to see more IoT? Definitely, that's uh, 2017, I'd say, you know, two main uh, strategies for 2017, security and IoT. So are you going to be seeing more edge oriented IoT? Yes. So you're going to be pro doing a fair amount of processing close to the edge because of physics? So one of the things that we say is we think that there's going to be less data moved back to the cloud and more cloud moved to the edge. Right. How, are, how do you see the relationship between uh, midstream oil and gas, being, you know, processing at the edge, doing running models at the edge, and making sure that the data that's in flight, which can be very strategic and very valuable on a lot of different dimensions, remains secure. Yep. So, you know, uh, as I mentioned at the outset, I mean, very um, complex company, and uh, moving a lot of, you know, a lot of, uh, 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 my, you know, uh, what we call um, oil and gas. Um, and uh, and uh, and the other products that, that go with that, and I think uh, so. If you as we look at IT, similar, right? Very complex uh, network, very complex systems that we have in place, and so analytics is becoming you know quite important to to uh, our whole uh, running of the business, and and obviously IT being an enabler of analytics, so. That is, you know, that's really what's moving us towards, um, and, and to do that, sorry, to do that with uh, devices in the field, um, think of your network is becoming very complex. So, uh, uh, not just wired devices any longer. Uh, wireless is a huge part of, of, of our network now, and keep those things secure, and the fact that we're actually connecting to things that run, you know, uh, the crown jewels, so to speak, uh, makes it even more imperative that we have, a, you know, very uh, focus on security and obviously great partners like Fortinet to uh, help us keep those assets secure. From a, from a security perspective, just curious from your standpoint, are you kind of the, the leader of that digital army within Gibson or, or with your other peers on that C-suite to facilitate not only this journey to cloud, and I, and I really liked how you talked about it, Peter, with the cloud moving out to the endpoints. What's your role in sort of, uh, and how is it measured, facilitating security from, from that eventually one data center out to those mobile IoT devices in the field? Right. So, I mean, you know, as I mentioned, security is kind of one of our top strategies. Uh, unfortunately, I guess it has to be. Um, but it's not hard to sell the importance of security with, you know, the other senior leaders of the team. I think the, uh, you know, uh, incidents that are happening in the world and the media, attention on security, um, makes it, uh, makes... Even in Canada. Even in Canada, <laughs> yeah. Um, makes it, uh, you know, apparent that that is kind of one of the questions that everybody's asking. And, right. and in our business, energy business uh, as well, I mean, health, uh, you know, HSS and E, health uh, uh, security uh, is, is paramount to what we do, you know, physically in the field. So security from a digital standpoint is, is, is uh, I guess, an easy sell to your question. It's very top of mind to everybody. And, um, and uh, IT kind of holds that banner as it, as it pertains to um, you know, the uh, security of our digital assets. So in some, in some senses you might be able to say that some of the recent breaches, and we know that now they happen daily, but some of the ones that have been in the media that you mentioned, could in some cases in, in your role maybe even be an advocate or an advantage for, uh, you're saying it's kind of an easy sell, we understand right the importance here, we want to get out ahead of it, understanding at some point we're probably going to get to the point of really being able to limit damage, that it's not a challenge in terms of 
the buy-in from right. your executive management. Right, and you know the risk I think for us is disruption. Um, and you see, you know, there's instances uh, around the globe where, um, whether it's, uh, you know, other utilities have been disrupted, you know, through uh, breaches. So, you know, that is our focus is how do we ensure that uh, our day-to-day -day operations are not disrupted by, you know, something that could have happened to, um, uh, uh, from a, you know, from a digital security standpoint. Got it. Well, it sounds like you have quite a big 2017 ahead. C continued success in the big data center from seven to eventually zero with Microsoft <laughs> Azure that you're yeah. going to do. We thank you, Richard Hanna, VP of Information Services at Gibson Energy. Thank you so much for joining us on theCUBE today. All right, thank you for having me. And on behalf of Peter Burris, my co-host, and myself, Lisa Martin, thank you so much for watching theCUBE. Stick around, we'll be right back. Oh.